So why would you even go world camping? Well, I think the main thing is, is it does teach you about your own ability to look after yourself in a situation where you have almost the minimum of stuff. So that's the first thing. It's a, like a good learning experience with fairly high stakes and stuff like that, where if you screw up, you're going to be uncomfortable. Or if you really screw up, you could die. So that's, that's the first thing, you know, the, the level of self-responsibility that is really appealing. And secondly, I think a little discomfort is good for you. I, I really do believe that a certain amount of discomfort is somewhat character building. You know, the idea that, you know, you, you're not going to freak out as soon as things aren't 100% perfect. You're going to try and think your way around a, a situation that you've managed to get yourself into. So, yeah, so I'm big into that and I've learned a lot and I've had a lot of uncomfortable nights out in the woods. I couldn't promise you that if you do it right, you'll never be uncomfortable. You'll never be, oh, I shouldn't have done this. You'll never question your decision to go into that environment. But you do it enough and it raises the bar of things that you're frightened about or things that will make you depressed. You, you know, you realize that the things around you, you know, it's quite a lot of layers between you and the real world. Whereas by going while camping, you know, you, you remove all those barriers, you know, and you learn sort of like what it might have been like for more primitive humans living, especially in a woodland environment. Woodland's great. It's got loads of materials. That's why people live there. You know, arboreal survival is probably the easiest kind of survival you can do. It's not like desert survival or Arctic survival or plains survival. Those all are really pretty sucky because the resources are few and far between. And it lets you practice um, solving problems with, you know, in the face of nature itself. So next week, as I'm recording this, I will be out in the woods with my, ver my, well, my best friend, someone I've known for nearly 33 years, so a third of a century I've, I've known Dean. And Dean is easily as good at being out in the woods as I am, probably knows a little bit more about plants than I do, is more invested in it. I tend to go and see what happens, whereas Dean got, usually got more of a plan and usually got better equipment than me. He's, he's invested financially in it as well, a little bit more than I have. Whereas I tend to go with the stuff that I've had for years. And episode three of this short series is going to be very much in the vein of, how do I say it? It's going to be in the vein of the anatomy. It's going to be the, the packing. Packing is kind of all important. As the saying goes, there's no such thing as bad weather, there's, ba there's only bad packing. So I know I'm pretty much, all I've got to do is fight maybe a rain shower and maybe being a bit cold, maybe, if that. I've slept in a hammock so many hundred times that, you know, I've probably spent about a year in a hammock out in the woods, you know, out of my life. So yeah, it's not really a step for me it's not really much of an adventure but the adventure end of it is that whilst we're doing the wild camping we're going to attempt to do a lot more bushcraft now the difference between going bushcrafting and going wild camping is that we're going camping whilst we're there we may brush up on or experiment with things that would make our lives easier if we had a lot less equipment so that the the, the learning how to exist in an environment is the bushcraft the event that we're doing while we're learning that is the wild camping. So you could go into the woods for an afternoon and practice various bushcraft skills. Please don't be a dickhead. You know, don't set things on fire. You know, if you do, if you do light a fire, then make sure that you put it out properly and you've got enough, you know, you don't get to light a fire unless you've brought along like two liters of water with which to put it out. Don't be a prat. Don't light fire on the woodland, fires on the woodland floor where the leaves could catch fire conceivably. If you are going to light a fire in a bit of wilderness, please don't light it on like an open gorse moor, which will just catch fire. You know, make sure that the environment around you isn't flammable and you don't build the fire so big that you can't control it. It's really important. You know, also, if you're going far from help, take a first aid kit, make sure your phone is fully charged up. You know, make sure that you can get help or that you can effectively patch yourself up well enough to get back to civilization if you're a long way away from the nearest town or road. You know, don't be a statistic. You know, 
and I'm not encouraging you to go and do any of this. If you go and do it, then it is on you. That's the whole point of, you know, self-responsibility. You know, don't do it at a stupid time of year. You know, do it in the summer. If you're going out for a, a long afternoon in some woods to learn a few bits of bushcraft, get yourself a copy of the SAS Survival Manual or one of Ray Mears' books and try out a bunch of stuff while you're there and improve your skills. So by the time you want to go wild camping overnight in the woods, you've got like a pretty good idea of what it's going to entail. So yeah, so I enjoy the discomfort. It's one of the reasons I like sailing so much. It's one of the reasons I, you know, lived off the grid for a few years. So yeah, so yeah, so this is like the introduction bit. Part two will be scouting out an area for bushcraft. We'll be, I'll be doing that. And part three will be the packing. And part four will be as much footage as I can get, as much interesting things I can film um, of the actual overnight wild camp because I haven't seen my mate Dean in over a year. So I'll film what I can. And if we make anything interesting or do anything cool, I'll make sure that there's footage. You know, and the other golden rule is nobody should really know that you were ever there. You know, leave nothing behind but footprints and take nothing with you but memories. So there you go. So, yeah, I mean, I'm huge into it. I don't see why other people aren't because it prepares you for disappointment and hard times more than any other hobby. You know, learn how to do stuff while you're there. Learn how to do things for yourself. You know, cook some baked potatoes in the embers of your fire. You know, boil a few eggs, make something interesting, do something fun. So... Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. This is episode, as I said, episode one of four. It may even be episode one of five. Depends how much footage there is, but I, I suspect it's just going to be four episodes, with episode four being by far the longest. So, yeah. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Do take care. And remember, end greed, end poverty, end hate, or we all die.